Hey guys, Metal Jesus here. Now, as you know, over the last year or so, there have been a lot of companies trying to solve the problem of getting your old retro gaming consoles connected to your modern televisions via HDMI. And Pound is a company that I have covered several times on this channel. And today I wanna take a look at their latest for the Super Nintendo. What Pound tries to do is appeal to the more budget-minded gamer. And these HDMI cables and converters are pretty affordable compared to some of the more high-end solutions out there. And they also try to bring the highest quality possible. Well, do they succeed with this one? I'm gonna say yes and no. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some direct gameplay footage compared to other solutions out there and help you decide if these are right for your game room. This device is an RGB to HDMI upscaler, meaning that the video output is at 720p, which is great, but that also means that it needs its own power and it gets that power from the USB connection on the side and they include a cable in the box. I also wanna let you know that this cable is currently only for NTSC consoles. As of the making of this video, Pound is still working on a PAL solution. Like my previous videos where I talk about these HDMI cables, I want to start off by talking about composite video because most of us in North America, this is how we connected our Super Nintendos to those old school CRTs. That gives us a baseline so we can see how these HDMI solutions improve or change the original video. I have a stack of games we're going to show you here, but we're going to start off with Ninja Warriors. And again, this is composite video. So this is just that yellow cable connected to an Elgato Game Capture HD and then going to my MacBook. And, uh, you know, blown up on a HD television, this is certainly playable, but it doesn't look as good as it could. And then here is the Pound HDMI. So a couple things of note here. First of all, I wanna say this is exactly the same console, same Game Capture setup, everything. But the first thing you're gonna notice, obviously, is that it is stretching the video to 16 by nine. And I actually found out that is by design. And the truth is, most people have an option on their television to stretch it back. So that's, that's exactly what I'm going to do here with the rest of this footage, is that I'm going to artificially stretch it back to four by three because that's what I prefer. However, out of the box, it is going to be 16 by nine to fill your entire modern television. Next up, we're gonna take a look at a game called Lamborghini American Challenge. This is a racing game that I really just wanted to include in here because I love Lamborghinis and I love racing games. So there you go. This is where things start to get a little bit interesting. So. First of all, on the left side there, you see composite video, and then on the right, you see the pound HDMI. Side by side like this, I noticed something immediately here, and I think you are probably seeing it as well. And that's just that the saturation coming off of the pound HDMI is definitely a little bit higher than the original footage. Notice that the color of the Lamborghini and also the color of the backgrounds, well, the reds are just a little bit more Again, saturated, a little bit higher. This got me thinking, I mean, could it be my old composite cable? You know, I haven't plugged this thing in in a while. I don't really remember exactly what the saturation should be here, but I do happen to have the analog Super NT clone system, which is considered, you know, pretty much the best clone system ever made for the Super Nintendo. So that's exactly what I did. I plugged it in. And with the same game and same capture setup, this is exactly what you see here. So I was able to lay them side by side and see exactly what's going on here. And basically, yes, I confirm that for whatever reason, the pound HDMI cable is boosting the reds enough to be somewhat noticeable. You can definitely see it during the intro. Check it out. So I have all three of them here, composite, analog, and pound, and of course that that Lamborghini Diablo on the right is definitely more red than it probably should be. Okay, so let's go ahead and come back to the color issue later because I'm gonna check out some other games as well here in a second and see if it's as noticeable. But getting back to this one here, notice at the top the text between composite and the pound. So 
As you can see here, actually, the Pound HDMI cable definitely looks sharper. Doesn't have that weird artifacting that you would get when you upscale just composite video. It actually looks pretty good on the Pound. Let's go ahead and take a look at a fan favorite. This, of course, is Super Mario World. And this is a good game to pick because I'm sure a lot of you are probably going to play it. And this, of course, is composite. So this is, you know, one of the worst ways to play this. But then let's go ahead and switch over the Pound HDMI. And in this game, you can see that while, yes, the reds are definitely boosted, but actually it doesn't look that bad at all. I would say this actually looks pretty decent. Another game I wanted to check out is Qbert 3. This is a great game on the Super Nintendo. And again, right off the bat here, I start noticing, oh, okay, yeah, definitely the reds are probably more than they should be. And then if I bring in the analog just to double check myself, then yeah, the colors are definitely off. So really, I think you're gonna notice this most in games that have a lot of red or perhaps levels like this one that has a lot of red in it. Next, let's check out a fantastic, fantastic shoot 'em up on the Super Nintendo, one of my all time favorites. This is Space Megaforce. And we're starting, of course, with composite and then switching over to the Pound HDMI. And this is another example where, yes, you can tell the difference. So again, it's not just a handful of games. It really is affecting pretty much anything you throw at it. However, let's be fair. Let's be honest here. And that is that you will almost never really be going side by side like this. So you have to ask yourself, I mean, how much does it matter? Because I do think that the Pound HDMI is definitely sharper. I mean, it's using that better quality RGB signal. So right there, it's gonna be a little bit sharper. It's gonna have a little bit less artifacting. But the trade-off is, is that it's not perfect. It is a little bit on the redder or more saturated side. Moving on through my testing, I decided to check out Musia. This is a 2D platforming game, as you can see here. And this is where, again, wasn't really crazy with the results with the Pound HDMI. So it's really obvious when you see these things side by side. So on the left is composite and on the right is the Pound HDMI. And you can just see that it's significantly darker. And in a game like this, it's almost to its detriment because yes, the game, especially this level is on the dark side, but oh my gosh, it's like, it's like hard to play with the Pound HDMI cable. So uh, again, not my favorite. So I, I really feel like it's gonna be kind of on a case by case basis with this cable. Let's go ahead and check out some other stuff. So here is Pack Attack. <laughs> this, is a, this is a really hilarious Tetris-like clone game, but it has Pac-Man and it plays just like like no other game that I've ever played. It's actually pretty cool, but, um, and you know, I would say actually this one is an example of it not being too bad. You know, again, it's a game that, yes, it has some red in there with the ghosts and things like that. And Pac-Man's probably a little bit more reddish yellow than he perhaps should be. But again, I mean, it's totally fine. Here's a game you don't hear a lot about. This is Run Saber. It's a side-scrolling action platforming game, as you can see here. And the gameplay is very similar to Strider. But I chose this because it has a lot of level variety. And as you can see here in this early level, it's very dark, but again, playable. And then later on, you see your character flying around on this jet and it's, you can hardly notice that the saturation's cranked up. So again, very playable. It's at this point that I should probably mention that they're gonna sell this cable for 30 US dollars and they're gonna do it through limited run games. And I'll be honest with you, it may be a little bit unfair of me to compare this to the analog Super NT. I mean, that device costs $190 and this costs 30. So you have to really ask yourself, I mean, is this good enough at that price point? Now for me, as you can tell in this video, I do feel like it's just a little on the dark side. It's a little bit too saturated, but that's something that I can compensate with my television or with my you know, game capture device. Also, I did reach out to Pound and show them what I discovered with this when I was reviewing it and they were aware of the situation. So 
It's possible that in the future they'll do a new revision of this. I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying that that is something that could happen. I know they've done that with the original Xbox cable, so it's something to consider. All right, guys, well, that is a quick look at the Pound Technology Super Nintendo HDMI cable. Now, if you want to learn more about this or check it out yourself, I'll put a link down to their website in the video description below. As always, guys, I want to thank you very much for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.